and we are going what is going on with everybody it is your boy eric aka young god coming to you live in the orange dungeon giving it to you real raw rugged and i have a uh i always say this but <clears throat> i have to really specify i have a super duper extra extra extraordinary special person on here right now and uh, i'll let him introduce himself man who do we have here today well hey thank you for the opportunity and stuff uh good evening how you doing doing pretty good man uh if you can introduce yourself for the people that might not be familiar with you uh that, that would be lovely okay well my name is dr lane rolling i'm an infectious disease specialist and a trauma surgeon uh i'm on the COVID healthcare task force for the uh congressional black caucus uh i'm the uh professor of pathogenic virology in germany and i'm one in one percent of the people on the planet certified chemical and biological warfare and so when it comes to this uh you know, viruses and diseases, I think I'm pretty qualified to talk to you young folks about uh, how to make sure you guys protect yourself and move into the future. Wait, a little background on me. Uh, I am pretty interested in doing this because, one, I've never interviewed a doctor. This is the first time this will ever be on the channel, first time me interviewing a doctor. Um, and, two, I'm a very unhealthy person, so this is going to be a very interesting one. Literally, I just, uh, I just faced a, a large pizza with eight boneless wings from Pizza Hut very unhealthy stuff uh but uh we're here today man so hopefully you can give me a little bit of tips you know we talk about covid and uh we can go from there man and i think the reality is that uh you know your your generation has to be a little bit more informed because you guys are going to be making the majority of the people going to be getting put in body bags mm. over there because of the new uh, uh virus mutants coming out of uh brazil africa and the world and so a lot of you young folks, uh, you know, you guys are not taking this stuff very seriously. You guys are complacent. You guys are partying, and you really don't understand what you're dealing with. But because this virus, you know, will will take you out one way or the other if you don't respect it. So let me talk about how I found you before we get deep into this. So I'm okay. sitting down watching TV with my mother, and uh, she has this uh, thing it's like a Samsung or something. And within those, they have like channels that come with the TV, so separate from the cable. And there's this channel called the Black News Channel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we're watching it, and just when we were watching it, you happened to be the next guest on. I was going to change it before you came on, and I was like, let me listen. You tell me, we're talking about COVID. So we sit and listen, and uh, you were just so interested. The things you were saying, you were. You were talking about it from a different perspective and a different approach that I've heard most professionals and just people talk about it, excuse me, in general. So right. um, I, I called you and we, we got in contact and I'll let you know that I have a lot of younger people subscribe to me. So I feel like, uh, not like kids, kids, but people around my age. And I was like, I think that would be a good demographic because I don't know how many young people are watching the Black News Channel, but I know people that are young watch me. So I would just, you know, want to have you on. I'm glad you accept that. Before we get into this, I just want to say thank you for even coming on, man. Well, I, I mean, I thank you for even <clears throat> get on your platform. But at the end of the day, uh, what makes me different is my my background in real life. You mm. know, I have degrees. Uh, you know, uh, period. Uh, and you know, I teach this stuff. I work in the real jungles of the Amazon and and see real uh, epidemics from Ebola, Zika, Chikungunya. I'm the guy on the boat going down the Amazon, actually vaccinating whole villages and treating whole villages of all types of multi-diseases and stuff. So I think for our people and for you young folks, I think I'm a very good representation of how it needs to be broken down to you because, like you said, you guys are not watching no Fox News or CNN. You guys, it's not even on your radar, but you got to have somebody that you can uh, look up to like, Uncle, Uncle Teal, Dr. Roland. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, man. And that's why I have you on here. Um, I, I kind of want to start with what you just said because a thing that I that I found that was interesting about you is that I found out that you have worked in um, foreign places. You have worked in these jungles. You worked in Germany and places like that. So I was curious of what brought you to those areas versus the United States. Well, I mean, you know, initially I'm a product of the United States. You know, I remember I'm the, the, the guy that was five years old and the, and the teacher told me I was retarded and wow. and all the systemic racism I've dealt with you know even dealing with the the grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan was a patient of mine but as you live life here in America as a, as a black individual versus your generation versus mine we have to be the very very best I could never be average so I wasn't ever ever allowed to be at one level I had to continue to progress from BS to masters to medical degree surgery programs and every opportunity that I could get that the military or, or I could uh, find in society, I took advantage of it. And so that took me from 
the United States. It took me to Hawaii. It took me to Germany. It took me to the jungles of Peru, Barcelona, Spain, Ecuador, the uh, Caribbean islands, learning and studying infectious diseases and stuff. So, I mean, when I talk about really being an expert, an expert is not just being academic. An expert is having practical application of that academic mm. in the real versus somebody drinking a Tai Chi, tai chi from Starbucks in Idaho that doesn't have a passport, never been out the world. So that's interesting because it's a lot of people during this pandemic, before I even get into that, uh, just in general, you, you know you have a lot of know-it-alls in America, people that think they, they know better than the professionals, just in anything, it could be from music, sports, whatever. And um, you going to these different countries, have you seen different mindsets on medicine, on just doctors, because the way that they're viewed in America might be completely different the way they're viewed in the Peru jungles, you know what I'm saying? So is there any difference? Oh, absolutely. Each culture is different. And I think one of the things that went away uh, when I spent, you know, 20 years in the Peruvian jungles treating folks that were paralyzed to kids with congenital defects and every disease you can imagine, it taught me one thing, that America wasn't so great. Mm. I mean, that's the bottom line. And what I learned that is two plus two is four. And what the white guys were uh, pushing out is bogus. They have no credibility. They they're no smarter than you or me. It's just they, they were in the position and stuff. And what you find out at the end of the day, that uh, you know, Europe, you are your best uh, uh, person to represent yourself is yourself. And so when you go to foreign countries like Germany and and Peru and all these countries I've been to, you learn you learn some more about yourself and realize that sometimes the the American hype ain't all about the American hype because if they can take uh, people and give them syphilis in America doesn't tell you much about the credibility, does it? Or they really don't have any credibility to do that. So I, I guess we can just hop into the pandemic because um, I guess you were referring to the Tuskegee experiment right there. Um, and uh, one thing that, uh, well, we, let's, let's, let's even back forward before we even get into current day. When it first started, so December ish i know a girl that works in like uh the medical field i don't know exactly what she does she does medical stuff and she told me like yo look up like look out for this covid thing like a lot of people aren't really taking it serious this is december she was like but remember i said this i'm like all right whatever so as it comes in february i mean and everything starts shut down it's just it, it blows my mind blows everybody's minds you as a professional did you see this coming beforehand or does this shock you if you look at my msnbc <laughs> interviews all the interviews I, I was telling people last year mm. uh in December, and it didn't come in last December, so she's mistaken there. This virus probably came out in March or April of 2019 in China. Mm. That's just a fact. Here in America, the virus was probably here probably September, October in the state of Washington, not only, especially on the uh, West Coast because we have such of the, you know, folks coming from China into Toronto and Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver Chinese folks are coming to Seattle, and that's where really the patient zero started was in California, or in uh, the state of uh, Washington, Seattle. So this was out here a long time ago. So now what happens, you have a lot of pundits and you can go back and look at these folks' records. They fail, and that's just the reality. That's Fauci, all these guys, because if it was the case, we wouldn't have 520,000 Americans are dead, and the numbers are going to be another half a million people are going to die by the time uh, June comes around. Mm -hmm. Because, like you say, these so-called experts are not experts, they're just talking heads. And what do you say when, you know... Uh, folks are dying and you're pushing out a message that you really are not an expert in because you really don't understand what you're really dealing with so in december around that time i went to this thing called art basel it was in uh, miami art basel it happens in miami switzerland and i think japan it's a big mm -hmm. gathering where people just see art uh music just things of that sort and it's people coming from all across the world and uh a couple of my friends they got really sick we didn't travel together but they were just super duper sick they went to the doctor yeah. they were like hey, what is this the doctor couldn't not tell them what it was so we were put in these very uncomfortable unsafe situations and my question to you is do you think that these people had prior knowledge they just didn't understand it or did they withheld withheld it for i don't know evil reasons or whatnot like why did it come out so late and you know, like, like, why didn't it come out as soon as it was a problem? Because what happens is you have in, you, you have incompetent folks, and I don't care what anybody says, and I don't care if I offend anybody on this uh, on this call. Because Saturday, uh, I was called by the hospital uh, in New Jersey where a, 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 a patient was dying, and the family called me, and I talked to the doctor, the doctor a week before, and that mother Saturday had three heart attacks. 
uh, had aspiration pneumonia and they were asking about doing a uh, DNR, which is a do not resuscitate. And I told the family this is an ugly situation because you don't want to see your mama like that. And their mama died within 15, 15 minutes. So I don't give a damn about uh, the Trump administration and all these fools out here because they killed a lot of folks but for misinformation, bad information. I think I had the COVID uh, myself probably January 1st. And I was sick for a week when I was in Amsterdam. I couldn't walk 10 feet. Mm. I couldn't park. I was shooting myself with medication. My daughter, Jordan Rowling, uh, she had it too. She had it for about three weeks. And so you were absolutely right. This thing was here a lot earlier, what was announced. And people were affected back in December, uh, November, January. Like you said, art festivals and people were sick and, and they couldn't figure it out. It wasn't the flu. So this misinformation is why we're set where we're at today. And what the previous administration and, and most of these talking heads, they have set back America for 100 years, educational wise, economic wise. Uh, this virus is endemic in our society. Uh, we will be wearing masks for the next five years of all the new variant uh, mutations. What they should have did was say, hey, folks, what is this, Dr. Rowling? Like I explained to all on my platforms, I always tell people before you can make a, make progress in the future, you, you have to really be able to understand what you're dealing with. And nobody sat down and had a, a what we call a real town hall and talk about the actual virus. So... I guess to kind of uh, keep on going from, I guess, the genesis of this uh, announcement that we were shutting down and everything was uh, getting a little hectic. I'm not a medical professional. I'm, uh, I'm I'm in college to get my psychology degree to get a doctorate, but nowhere near to be exerting my opinion on what's going on during this pandemic. That's why I'm talking to you. But one person that has been deemed, I guess, the person to talk about it is Fauci. Now, one thing I remember about Fauci that he flip-flopped on was at the very beginning he said to not get masks like masks wouldn't really help this so uh, i was curious was this something that was widespread in the science uh, community that everybody uh, thought this uh, i mean just keep it real i mean I, i'm i'm certified chemical and biological warfare i, I deal with real pathogens and bsm <laughs> laboratories you know with ebola you know uh multi-drug resistant tuberculosis so no absolutely not at the beginning, the policy, it's, this is a virus that's transmitted by respiratory, respiration. You have to have a mask. So by them playing that game back and forth, they killed a lot of people, and that allowed the virus to multiply just as further than what it is now. So you can't, you cannot have it one way or the other. You cannot tell uh, an individual uh, person not to wear a mask, and all of a sudden a month later you're telling them wear a mask after people are dropping like flies. And so at that time you've lost credibility because you can imagine if I was on there telling people one week to wear a mask and the following week I tell you not to wear a mask and then two weeks later I'm telling you hey this wear a mask and, and we're going back and forth you lose the credibility in this business are you cannot really <laughs> to lose the credibility because in our world we're dealing with real 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 stuff infectious easy we're talking with viruses that kill people and you know you look what happened so Fauci and all them guys had their opportunity and how many people have died, young man? How many people have died so far up to this day? 520,000 Americans are dead wow. because they didn't flip-flop back and forth on a mask. And I think that kind of goes back to what you were just saying a couple minutes ago when you said that uh, in, in your era, and in, even still in my era, to, to, to growing up being a black person and something like a doctor, like something in that profession, you got to be performing at all levels. You got to be the Michael Jordan of doctors for them to even give you credibility. And you saying that if you were up there flip flopping, they would have called you all types of work. You know, what I'm, like they would have called you way out your name or whatnot. So I think that even shows that, you know, being in that profession and, and not being black, you might get a little leeway where they might make excuses for him rather than they would have for somebody of your color. Keep, they've always made excuses for white boys. <clears throat> I'm just gonna call it like it is, man. They they can't shoot the basketball very well or they can't play the the uh, 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 the the receiver position they got to put my quarterback. I mean, we can go on yeah. of things. And as as a professional educator like myself that has six degrees, I'm degreed up, and so I don't. And nobody on this planet going to talk to me about education because I'll spit in your face. Mm. Period. I don't want to hear it. You you're not qualified. And I've gone through that scenario where I got uh, I'm I'm you know a pretty good doctor, and I got two. I got the the doctor that has to do my evaluation has two degrees, I got four more than he does, and he's he's evaluating me. I mean, the ironic hypocrisy of that uh, is just it's astounding. And I'm thinking now, uh, like I was talked about last night on a black news channel, my experience with racism in the Ku Klux Klan, 
I'm hoping that we can move forward as a, as people, but we always got to keep the eye on the prize because, you know, these folks, they have a different viewpoint, what they really think about us. And that's just the way it is because if we can talk about the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, we can talk about KKK lynching people and cutting babies out of women, hanging from bridges and stuff. So we just don't sugarcoat it. And that's the problem that we've had. We tried to sugarcoat things and make things politically correct to fit a narrative, but the narrative is staring you right in your face and stuff because you, as a young man, go out, they can arrest you and shoot you or they look at me. If I don't have my lab coat and I used to tell people, am I supposed to write doctor on my forehead? <laughs> and that's just the reality that we live at in this, in this American world, period. And uh, you talk about being evaluated by a doctor who may have two degrees, you have four more. I feel like a, a lot of this just falls down on qualification and a lot of people who are speaking on these things aren't qualified to talk about it. In any profession, you gotta be quali if you in if you're a basketball commentator, you gotta be qualified to talk about basketball. Even if you're talking about something like somebody in the streets, like if they're talking about street activities, those people are qualified to talk about that. I'm not. I am I'm neither of those things. And I feel like a lot of people have to realize that because when you think about this pandemic uh, uh, another person that was right with Fauci that I, that I would put as like the head spokesperson for the COVID was Trump. And I wouldn't say Trump was qualified whatsoever to talk about it. So where do you think they went wrong? Like what was the first step and what will be your step uh, at the very beginning of this to, 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 for it to not be this big and not this tragic? Well, the first thing you have to have <laughs> that are trained and really understand infectious diseases at, in the, in, on what I call boots on the ground and really understand that, not not from understanding some textbook. What the Trump administration did with uh, him and Fauci and all these guys, they made this thing in political. They had the power and they had disinformation and that disinformation killed a lot of folks. People still dying because of that disinformation and what they should have did was say, folks, this is, this is the SARS virus, the largest RNA virus on the planet. This virus mutates every two weeks. The virus came from a bat because pandemics, epidemics, the viral viruses come from animals. It could be a bat, a monkey, whatever, and that virus jumps into a human being. And most of the time, these viruses come from a wet market, from China to Africa. This is what this virus do. This virus is transmitted by two primary ways, airway, respiratory, and by fecal, fecal transmission. Yeah. Folks, this is how you protect yourself. You better have the best mask. You better wash your hands, not with soap and water, because if you wash your hands with soap and water, you have a chance of getting sick and dying because nowhere in the world is written wiping your hands with soap and water kills microorganisms. If you actually read the bylaws of the World Health Organization, it says it right there. And us biological guys, in fact, these guys, we know this, it says it right there. Wash your hands with soap and water does not kill microorganisms. It only gets rid of secretions, excretions, debridement. So this is the false information on people that really don't know what they're talking about because they're in a position of power and they have set this country back, you know, 50 years, 100 years. And that is the mistake they made is in telling people you need to wear a mask. You better wash your hands with an antiseptic soap and not with an antibacterial soap. Hey, this virus can last on uh, last on feces for 35 days. You better flush your toilet. You better put a lid on it. Hey, folks, this virus can laugh on a cell phone for 28 days. All them touch screens that you're touching out in the public, the, the kiosks the, at the airport, the ATM machines, all are contaminated with feces and stuff. You better get them my fingers. What Dr. Rowland talks about, these finger pads, so when you're touching these kiosks, you're not touching it and getting feces on your hand, which is loaded with a billion viruses, and you touch your face, you get SARS, and you're out of here. See, that's what they should have did from an infectious disease perspective and not from some politician that has no degrees, no no, no credibility, just a name. My sister's a chief of OB, but my, my sister's not talking about infectious disease. She's an OBGYN doctor. See, they needed you up there, man, because you you got me scared, man. I'm, I was already scared of virus. Like, I have not left my I left my house one time, which we'll talk about later, like in, in like a big environment. I've been in my house because I'm around my mother, and she's a cancer survivor. So I would never want to put her in any, because I know she's a high-risk person. So I would never want to put her in any type of, like, crazy predicament. So why, why would you not wear a mask around your mother who's went through that part of her life, and you know the virus is respiratory? Why would you not wear it? So these idiots out there were telling people not wear a mask, and what is what are we wearing? We're gonna be wearing masks for the next five years. See, my fault. Period. 
you no, know, I mean, like I said, I'm I'm masked up every time I'm around people. I'm I'm, I'm super safe, and I said that I feel like they should have had you on it because you talk like like the way you talk about it. You don't talk about it as if it's like sunshines and flowers. Like you like you you die. You need like the way you talk about it is very insertive and blunt, and I feel like that's what people need to hear instead of trying to beat around the bush and go ring around a rosy from it. And I think the delivery that you have is a, a very effective one. That's why I wanted to interview you, mm-hmm. and and, and it's, it's great. And I'm not I'm not here to sugarcoat things. Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day, I've seen what diseases can do. I'm talking the real world. I've seen people. You can go to my website, you know, to peta.org, and you can look at. I got seen diseases where people's jaws are falling out, mm. eyeballs are their head. People, uh, I've cutting people's legs off from gangrene, from all types of different diseases and stuff. And so I have a, a different perspective, a real perspective, and so. Nobody can come here and they, and they can, uh, you know, uh, sugarcoat crap with me because I'm I'm not the wrong person to play around with. Like I tell people, I'm not the Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm not a teddy bear. Yeah. I, you know, poked in the stomach and go, ooh wee, I like this. You know, I I'm not the type of guy I play with because I work too hard and see too much death and destruction in the real world. And I and I wish I could bring the smell in here. Mm. And you smell, you'll never forget it. And I I think where 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 you just kind of messed me up at is where you said uh, washing your hands with just regular soap that ain't enough. I've been washing my hands with Dove soap, thinking I'm straight. But uh, no, according you, to you, then I'm, I'm I'm messing up. No, it's a nice. That's according to fact. It okay. Says here, uh, it's written that you don't be using Dove. You need to be using an antiseptic uh, uh, hand wash. Is what we recommend. Okay. They have to kill soap viruses and bacteria. And one of the places you can get that is called My Fingers. www m i f i n g e r dot com. They have the antiseptic hand wash. They have the finger pads. They have the, the best mask that I'm recommending right now is the FFP3 mask, which has 99 percent air filtration, which really works. Not all these N95s, because half the N95s in the United States are fake. So I'm hey, like, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm doing a good job. Apparently, I'm not. <laughs> Cause you know you don't you don't drop the ball on me. I'm thinking that I'm going out with the N95 mask. Thinking I'm doing it, but uh, explain that. What, what do you mean some of them are fake? Well, what happens is that a lot of the masks that came in from China they imported. I mean the FBI. This, you can Google this. This is two weeks ago. They got you know I don't know I mean, how many masks are fake. Over 10 million FFP masks. FFP. Excuse me, not FFP, but over 10 million N95 masks that are in the United States are fake. So you don't know what you're getting. And so the mask I recommend, you know, is certified me because I'm. I'm a chemical biological. I wear it, my grandchildren wear it, and you're my child. I gotta make sure I take care of you and your mom. So I don't I don't got time to be playing around with the mask is real or not real. I know that the mask I recommend are certified by me because them the ones I'm gonna wear. It's gonna save my life. I remember at the beginning, like you said, so much misinformation. I just wanna clear everything up. One thing that I read, I have no idea if it's true or not, I remember them saying that cloth mask did not help that much. But I see more people with cloth masks than even an N95 mask. So what's up with the cloth mask? The reason why is that's just because it's cosmetic. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, what I wear a cloth mask in this environment nowadays with all these uh, African mutants, uh, you know, uh, London mutants, and also hybrid mutants with the California mixed with the London, it kill you in a minute. No, uh, you better be wearing a serious mask and get away from that cloth. Now, if you want to wear a FFP3 mask and then put over a black mask because you're looking cosmetic, that's one thing. But if you're using that cloth mask, it's your frontline uh, defense against a very uh, virus that's 0.1 micron. You're taking a risk uh, of getting yourself infected because it's all about the viral load. The reason why we talk about air filtration, N95 means 95% of the, the air particles or viruses should be filtered. When we start talking about FFP3s, you're looking at 99 percent air filtration of the, the individual uh, organisms or particles on the outside. So these are the masks you got to have versus a cloth mask. It's not even in that category. And you say the 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 what do you call them the, the finger things? You say so like we touch a kiosk. Yeah, we have uh, there's a product called My Fingers. It's a finger pad. You go to My Fingers to look at it, and this is the only thing FDA approved EPA that you can when you go out in public you stick this on your finger. And you can touch the touch screens, you can touch the kiosk, and it's impregnated with a chemical called silver ions that kills viruses, bacteria, and fungus. It's an EPA-listed thing. And so 
we already know in the future people are going to have to have this uh, these finger pads to be able to function in our touch our touch screen society because of all the every one of the touch screens that you touch at Walmart, Target, the bank, your pizza joint, gas pumps are all contaminated with feces, and, and the virus lives in the feces for 35 days. So I, I kind of want to go back to the beginning of where you said that my generation's partying, not really caring. You're not really caring, excuse me. And um, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. I, like I said, I've been as responsible as I can. People have invited me places. No, thank you. People, you know, I've just been in the house trying to just distance myself away from people. The one time that I really went out was I, it was a big business opportunity and I went to New York. So I flew to New York and I'm from Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, to be specific. Um, I seen you was there recently on your, on your Instagram. You was at the, yeah, the Double Tree. I did the Hilton Jacksonville. Yeah. Working with the uh, Jacksonville Transportation or or, or the, 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 the JTA, yeah. showing how to keep the buses from being affected, how people can get their tickets, looking at their system to help mitigate and contain the and uh, the infection on the bus transportation, and also making sure that folks in Jacksonville stay healthy. Man, I, I think they might need five Dr. Lane Rollins to, to clean up Jacksonville. Man, I don't know <laughs> if it's enough. I don't know if you just want enough. They're gonna probably need five of you. And, and when I went up there. Um, I, I'm in New York, and the way that they treat... I'm pretty sure you've probably... Have you been in New York since the pandemic started? Yeah, I was in New York, and I'm there quite a bit. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you've seen the way that they treat COVID in New York versus the way they treat it in Jacksonville. It is just the polar opposite. I've seen everybody with a mask on. Uh, maybe you disagree, but just off of, like, just oh, face value. Oh, you do agree? I, I saw the, the homeless people in Jacksonville. I, I love my, my Navy helicopters flying over the water. I really took time to look at the people and the demographics of Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. and, right. And that goes back to your leadership, your governor putting a policy down, which has killed a lot of people, not based off of science and medicine versus New York, where they at least tried to have an active program that was based in science and medicine. And at the end of the day, you, you're right. There's a contrast. And we're going to see uh, how long this is going to go. But the, the virus is already out in Florida and y'all got a long ways to go, just like New York. Man, you I was in New York. If you don't have a mask on, they look at you like you're crazy. If you have a mask on in Jacksonville sometimes, they might look at you like you killed somebody. Like They might like, why you got a mask on? So you just even the mindset is just so different. And um, and, and I, I, I'm curious, because you just said something. I almost forgot about that. You said that the leadership is a big thing. So our governor, um, uh, DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, I feel like he's made a lot of just just stupid just rules and stupid laws and I want you to answer this because you're way more qualified. He made a law that if you are working at let's say McDonald's, you catch COVID, you have to quarantine for I think it was 17 7 days or maybe 14 days, I'm not for sure, but you quarantine 7 to 14 days and to go back to work, you don't need a positive test. Because apparently you can get a false negative or false positive or whatnot. So all you got to do is just quarantine 14 days and you can go back to working at McDonald's or whatever restaurant establishment. One of the most idiotic things I've ever heard. I thought period. so. That's what I call complete stupidity. Have you heard of that law, by the way, before you, before you go in? I, I don't. It doesn't matter. That does, that's not, I don't know what law that came from. That's not a law based off of medicine and science. That must be some, uh, some person's rule that they made up because... That virus has not had that virus does not have a standard. A virus is not fit into a rule. A virus is going to do what it does. So you have to understand the basic background of what viruses do. You get infected. It takes about seven to fourteen days to have what we call real antibodies to really pick that up and stuff. And then you can be positive for thirty days, sixty days, you know, on the average, and then the then the virus will the antibodies will go away. But the most reliable test for screening people to get people back into society is what we call PCR, hmm. which is polymerase, polymerase change reaction, which we actually look at the RNA virus in your body. That is the most accurate for acute infection and stuff. That is the gold standard. You know, and if you're telling people to go back to work now and they, they don't have to have a positive negative test, you're an idiot because now we have these new variant mutants. So somebody can be infected be at home from seven days, go to McDonald's, get infected again, be asymptomatic, and infect other people. Mm. So this is where the, the, it's so crazy. You have to have a, a standard biosafety, biosecurity protocols, and rules in place. PCR testing for everybody. 
maybe every three days, period. Wash your hands with antiseptic soap. Wearing a mask is mandatory. You know, all these things. Making sure that you don't wear your shoes in a house. If you have a business, make sure you have the, the mask that can disinfect your feet or the bottom of your shoes because the virus can be transmitted on the bottom of your shoes. So we recommend people don't wear your shoes in the house. So if you have these rules in place based off of science and medicine, you, it helps maintain and mitigate and contain the SARS-CoV virus and we don't have this run-of-the-mill people in, uh, in Jacksonville doing things different than what people doing in Miami. Yeah. The people be doing different than what people are doing in Idaho. If you don't have a uniform policy, you're never ever going to get hold of the beast. Period. So it's I'm <clears throat> this is midway through this. Uh, thank you once again, like I said, for clearing this up for me for everybody watching because it's really uh, appreciated. And um, I, I was going to say, is there any other things that you could talk, think of off the top of your head that are misconceptions about this virus that people widely believe or believe enough that you think you need to dispel right now? Because as I'm trying to think, I don't want to miss anything that may be important. Well, I don't, I, don't, I mean, uh, they're going to, you're going to have people out there that are going to have their misconceptions or whatever the false information. I'm going to base it off of facts. I'm going to give you guys the ABCs right now on how to prevent yourself from being affected okay. from bacteria and fungus or infectious diseases guy did what we use. Well, we have, uh, and we call it ABCs. We have an R. An R, we know that it's respiratory. We know that this virus is transmitted through respiration, so you better have a mask. And that mask better be the best mask you can get your hand on and not some N95 mask, but it better be an FFP3 mask that has 99% filtration because of the new variant mutants, period. The virus can transfer, the virus, there's no such thing as social distancing. The virus can go three feet, six feet, 12 feet. The virus can go 1,000 miles. Mm. It can be in the air for 14 minutes. It could be in the air for an hour, depending on what the brain currents are. That's the R. And then we have seven Fs. And the seven Fs are we have face, we have feces, we have thighs, we have fingers, we have food, formite, and we have foot. If you know that these, these things can transmit viruses and you know what they do, you can mitigate. Let me give you an example of what a, one of the Fs is. It's a fomite. Okay. A fomite is an inanimate object. It is your clothes, it's your shoes, it's your eyeglasses. The, the virus can live on your cell phone for 28 days. Money, ATM card. That's an inanimate object. Your coffee cup, your steering wheel, the gas pump handle, the kiosk machine. That's a fomite, a needle. Then we have feces. The virus can live in feces for 35 days. Hey, the virus is on all the ATM machines. The virus can live on, uh, you know, when you can imagine going to the airport, Jacksonville, and you, you go in that public bathroom, you flush that toilet, there's no list on that. Somebody's symptomatic or asymptomatic, that virus becomes fecal, what we call aerolized, but it goes everywhere. You know, so that's the concept. So making sure that you, if you have your home, making sure that you have a good protocol and procedures to disinfect your bathroom. That is why they have a lid in your home on the bathroom yeah. when you use the toilet. And people don't 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 understand that. And then I and I think another F I think might be important is understanding uh, the foot. Simple businesses should have masks that have the ability to disinfect people's bottom of people's shoes because the virus is transmitted on their bottom of your shoes. Also, that influenza, hepatitis A, B, gram positive, gram negative bacteria. So in this day and age, it's probably important for you to make sure you take off your shoes before you walk in the house and disinfect the bottom of your shoes. Even if you have a pet, you know, your dog goes out and uses the bathroom, you know, that dog paws needs to be disinfected every time that, that dog comes into the house or the animal because they can spread the, the virus too to you too. So these are a couple of things. And if your young folks really want to, you know, get this information, uh, I have a book that I published three months ago and people can get the information, what we're talking about, concise 52 pages on in the book. And that is at www. A U S E T dash I S I S dot org. Let me repeat it again. W W dot A U S E T dash I S I S dot O R G. And when I'm telling all you folks, it tells you how to, you know, manage your bathroom, the, the, the seven F's I've talked about, the R, et cetera, you know, all this stuff, what, what instrumentation you should have in your house in case you do get sick versus Tylenol versus Motrin, having a post hoc, 
And so this is the information that people have to have and make sure they get the information from people that are reliable, that are actually trained in this area. And then if somebody says they're an expert, you need to say, uh, have you actually really done an epidemic treatment clinics in the jungles? <laughs> and it have it, they're not an expert. So question about one of the Fs real quick, fingers. Um, we're going out somewhere, we gotta go to the store, you open up doors, you're touching stuff. Uh, I don't think it's recommended to wear gloves. Like how is that, sa- like what do you do to be safe? That's- that's, that's why we that's why we developed the my fingers the finger pads okay because and that's what that is is to when you're going out to that store you put that on your index finger your fingers that you use to be able to touch things you know keep it's a barrier from that uh, from you to be in contact with that touch screen we say do not wear gloves because gloves gives you a false sense of security and they're the gloves are just as nasty they build up I've seen people with gloves go from yellow to purple and dark and people wear the same gloves and they're touching stuff. And so when you have a natural feel, when you have your hands that are natural, you always have that in your brain. Nowadays, you know, what am I touching, you know, et cetera. You know, for example, you go to the market and people are there touching the lemons or they're touching the cucumbers. They're touching them and putting them back in there. That can be a source of infection yeah. for you too. So you have to be smart. And what I call, you have to have what we call situational awareness. You have to look at the, the environment see how the environment is going and how you how other people function because other people will get you sick i know one thing uh i don't know if this is a part of the abcs but let's go to the e's i seen you were wearing the 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 little goggles over your eyes and you were saying that's the way to get it uh through your eyes i I wasn't aware of that yeah i you know uh, one of the things is transmission especially when you're in closed spaces like on an airplane i wear goggles i wear i wear glasses are called onion glasses and stuff and if you see my thing as I travel quite a bit because if you get in an environment like that, there's no social distancing on an airplane or a bus, et cetera. So you're on that plane, depending on how long that hours is, uh, many hours on that plane, that virus load becomes tremendous. If somebody coughs, you know, and you've been on a plane, somebody coughs, that virus is there. The virus can be also, you can contract the virus to your eyes. Mm. Some people get severe conjunctivitis because they get a big viral load gets in the eyes virus gets into the eye and it gets into your body that's that's crazy i and i and i'm just thinking because i heard you talking about like if your dog comes in i don't have a dog but let's say if somebody's walking their dog nobody's outside do they still need a mask there's nobody outside is there still you know if i I go to the park and i'm walking uh you know uh you know i'm walking with my you know my wife or you know whatever the case is my kids or you know i'm walking by myself there's nobody to park there's no need to wear a mask okay once again, it goes back to that situation of awareness. But if I'm going to Walmart and it's a thousand people in Walmart on a Saturday, well, I'm going to not go there anyway. <laughs> I'm going to five o'clock in the morning because most people are sleeping anyway. Yeah. You know, that's when you need to wear your goggles and making sure you're masked and stuff like that. You're in your car by yourself. You don't need to wear your mask. You know, that's that's overkill. So b- before I get to, I guess, like the, the hot topic right now, the vaccines, uh, something that I'm interested in because I'm a big sports guy. I like sports, I like play basketball, I like to watch sports. Um, and it's a couple of things that I've been wondering, and uh, I'm sure you can answer it for me. I see a lot of high school sports, specifically basketball, they're playing basketball with mask on. Is that effective at all, or should they just not be playing basketball? Well, I mean, it's effective because of the potential, any potential to decrease your chance of getting a, a viral, uh, viral load from the SARS virus is, is useful. How effective it is to the individual athlete, that still needs to be addressed and stuff. Because when you put on a mask, uh, and the masks that we have are not really great masks for filtration, air filtration. Uh, I do got an announcement I'll be making probably later this week or the next uh, next week. I got a, a, one of the top masks in the world that has the ability to give in ventilation inside and out, and the mask actually kills the virus. NASA technology, pretty awesome. Is it is is this like is this it's your mask, mask or is this? Is this is it's, it's a company that I'm gonna be uh, doing some work with? And so they came to me, they presented me with one of the baddest masks on the planet. I'm mm-hmm. talking like Darth Vader type of stuff. I'm I'm tuned in for this. <laughs> I'm tuned. You said next week? Yeah, it'll be out next week. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll make an announcement uh, on Instagram where we got to come back and do part two. And for sure. Couple, but yeah, but just follow my Instagram and I'll be making that. Announcement on uh, the mass is better than FFP3. Oh, I, I can't wait for that. Um, and, and another question about sports. 
I um like I said, there's a lot of uh, athletes who've caught it, of course. I mean, who've caught it, of course. And um, a lot of those players haven't came back the same. Like they came back to seem like I don't know if they were mentally off or they were just couldn't get the air under. But is there any chance that if an athlete catches COVID, his mental could be messed up coming back? Absolutely, you know, an athlete's no an athlete or anybody. Uh, there's nobody that's Superman to this virus. Everybody can be infected. And that's the reason why we have a big uproar because, you know, finally there's the disease is not some black kid in, in, in Africa that got yeah. malaria Ebola, or some uh, uh, native Indian in the jungles of the Amazon, the boars or the Yaguas. Now what's happened is this disease can reach out and kill white people. Mm. Now because serious because they didn't care about Ebola. They didn't care about malaria. They don't care about anything unless it, it ends up hitting them and they put them in a body bag just like everybody else. So now it's important. But at the end of the day, not one individual is immune to this disease. Anybody can get it. An athlete can get it. And guess what? He can recover and he can have mental fall. He can have complication. You've heard about some of the basketball players in Florida that have come, had COVID when played basketball and they had heart attacks on the floor. Mm. And the game passed out. You know, it affects your heart. It affects your neurovascular system. Long term, you can have diarrhea, you can have uh, loss of taste, loss of smell, you can have what you would call mental fog, slow down the mentation, dementia, you know, uh, that type of stuff. Because this virus is a game changer, this virus affects every cell in your body. Anything that has an ACE2 receptor, this virus affects, so that means it's almost everywhere in your body. And people that have underlying diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma, uh, and people that are obese, they have a worse time with the virus because the virus puts a tremendous amount of stress so athletes are no immune to it they're not superman uh and the athletes that have come back they're, they're probably not going to be the same and that's what we call that long haul uh, hauler syndrome where we're still learning what the long-term effects is and it's going to be a, a quite a long-term effect man that's uh, one thing that i tell people that are my age i'm like because you know it was preached that if you're young you're good but i'm like hey even even if you like you're recovering you're fine we don't know the long-term effects. This virus has been introduced to us not even a year ago to, to America, to, 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 to the general public. So why would you even risk being a guinea pig for this and not even knowing the full long, long-term effects for it? So I'm glad you brought the long-term effects. Well, and the long-term effects is that that's a misnomer. The virus can affect the African virus, a variant is affecting everybody. Yeah. Children, London, the same thing. So this is where people open their mouths up and they really didn't understand what they were dealing with. Like I talked about eight months ago, the immunogenic capabilities of the, the SARS virus is unbelievable. If you think of that there's the African strain and you think there's a London strain and you heard all these other strains, man, let me tell you right now, there's over 4,000 SARS viruses right now in the world that we that are circulating. We just don't know what the end game of these viruses are, period. That's just the facts. And the thing that's, I guess, uh, stopping a lot of people from getting scared is the vaccine. I know the NBA, they want to do a PSA on the vaccine, but apparently a lot of the NBA players are a little hesitant to hop on board because they're like, we don't know if we trust this vaccine or not. So as much crazy stuff has been said about vaccine, good or bad, I want to know what you, what your thoughts are about the Pfizer and the, the vaccines well, that are uh, out right now. Vaccines right now, folks, let's just keep it real. You know, you I broke mean, you, you broke up. Can you, can you say that again? No, I said, just keep, just keep it real. And this, you know, we're going to base this off of status to medicine. I, I'm going to tell people again, I, I love vaccines. I, I vaccinate children from measles a month. I've seen the horrors of people not getting vaccines. I believe in vaccines. But these vaccines right now have been rushed too quick. They're experimental. That's why they call them EUA, Experimental Use Authorization. What they're doing is they're figuring out the information they're on, on you guys. You guys are the guinea pigs. And they're going to find out. They're going to inject you, and then they're going to find out what the results are. Maybe you get paralyzed. Maybe you lose your eyesight. Maybe you get Bell's palsy. Maybe you get uh, anaphylactic reaction. You know, this is what they're doing now. And so, in my opinion, people need to take a deep breath, wait to find out what the science and medicine uh, says before you jump on this. And it's like you say, it's pretty ironic now. A year ago, people weren't even talking about Negroes, black folks. And now, every time you look on, they're pushing this, this, this vaccine on black folks. And all of a sudden, we're the flavor of the month. Well, what happens is a complication. What happens if that vaccine, uh, they even have, they have not even answered the question, should you be giving or have they tested black folks that have sickle cell? 
Sickle cell is one in 350 black Americans have sickle cell. In the military, you have to tell people you have sickle cell because you can go into a sickle cell crisis. What are the effects of you injecting this vaccine until a person has sickle cell? Mm. Maybe a crisis before. And they, you give them this vaccine, this vaccine that you haven't tried it, or you know what the results are, and somebody has a reaction, uh, sickle cell, and they end up dying. Maybe they end up getting their leg cut off. Who's responsible? Well, you have to realize that the vaccine companies have what they call sovereign immunity, which means they can't be sued, mm. even if you die. Well, 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 one thing that they say, and I wonder what your response to this is, they say that it came out so fast, uh, faster than usual vaccines, because they put more money into it and they got more donations. No, they didn't. The bottom line is it takes three to ten years to make a vaccination. Only, the only reason they put it out fast is it's like, hey, I paid $500 million for that Corvette. I want my Corvette today. Yeah. That's what that's about. And so they don't care. They're just getting it out there. They've already been paid. They're not going to make any money one less of it. They already got paid. And so they have to perform. And that's been when the politics get into it. You know, the Trump administration talking about these so-called vaccination millions. They, they were full of air, you know, lying their butts off. And, you know, even though, you know, we have the new president, Biden, and I support Biden, voted for him, et cetera. The point is, is that the, you can see how ineffective they are, and they've been in charge. And so it's going to be interesting to see. They, they're going to have to get their stuff together because if if, if, in, if by June another 500,000 Americans have died on Biden's watch, oh, this ball game is over. They're done. There is no more credibility from anybody. So they better get it right now and make sure they got the right message and making sure they have the right people communicating to African Americans because if there's a big time uh, problem with this vaccine, who are you gonna call? And I'm I'm glad you brought something up. You you brought up how they they push it to black people. I feel like a lot of people. Uh, I don't want people to see this as like the anti-vax thing or whatnot. But when I hear specifically black people are cautious of just medicine doctors in general, because I read a study that black people are the most cautious and the most hesitant to go to doctors than any other race in America, and that's because of the history of black people and medicine. I read a great book. I think her name is uh, Harriet Washington. I hope her name is right. I'm yes. getting her name right. Medical Apartheid. Medical Apartheid. That book, I've been using that book since it comes out. Every medical student that I train in the world reads that book. That's part of our program. So I understand Medical Apartheid, this Kosiki Syphilis Experiment, Dr. Sims cutting out black females' vaginals about anesthesia in Alabama, Radiation Experiment, the Syphilis Experiment, you know, uh, sterilization of black women, radiation. We can go on and on of the horrors that uh, white Americans perpetuated on black folks and tell us to get along and be quiet about it. Now, this is 2021. That that game's up. Yep. Well, hey, I, I, I think I've ran out of questions. I have a couple of questions that I source from people out in the audience, and uh, that's how we can end that. So I'll pull that up, and uh, we can go from there. All right, let's see what we got. So uh, the first question comes from somebody. I would assume he works at some type of maybe hospital. I don't know exactly where he works at, but he says, uh, where is it at? Can you ask him about the, uh, I think it's convos- convalescent plasma and and remdesivir as a treatment for COVID? Remdesivir and convalescent plasma, that's probably one of the biggest problems that we have because they, they, this is a fact. Remdesivir just has nothing to do with the, the new uh, variant uh, Mutations. People need to realize that the vaccines that Pfizer, this severe, this stuff is coming from the the, the what we call the D614 Wuhan virus. Somebody got infected a year ago. We need to make a vaccine. They went and got a patient, got their blood, and that's how they did. It. Well, that virus has nothing to do with the South Africa strain, the Brazil strain. So that monoclonal antibody uh, it does not this uh, severe ain't going to work against the African strain. And definitely it's not going to work against the hybrid strain, uh, you know, with the California strain and the London strain. And mark my words, in about a month, it's going to be a, a planet of the ape strain because the gorillas and the San Diego Zoo are infected with the COVID-19. And that's what we call blowback. The virus jumps into an animal and that animal throws it back at us. So they're going to have to come up with another vaccine. So, so that's not going to work. And then the only other on the on the on the convalescent plasma, that's probably the, one of the biggest problems when we start talking about resistance, because they've given this stuff to people that are chronically ill, and that's what they believe that some of these super mutants are coming out of. For example, the HIV patient is a prime person 
to be immunocompromised, get the infection, the virus gets to look at the body, gets exposed to all the different medications, and once it touches that, that virus mutates and becomes stronger. And so remdesivir and convalescent plasma, if it was to be the all to be all, we wouldn't have over 500,000 people have died. Mm. Just put so does it really work? And, and I guess speaking of treatments and things like that, I almost forgot to ask when we talk about vaccines. When I was watching on the Black News Channel, it was the time when they asked you, like, uh, what are your thoughts on it? And you said that you'll be taking, you and your grandchildren will be taking the grand, I mean, not Grandvax, Covax, excuse me. And yeah, I'll, that's right. Uh, and that's Covax, is C-O-V-A-X-X. And that'll be out probably in the next six months. And in my opinion, that's the one I'm going to take for sure. And I'll get on national television and take it in front of everybody. And my grandchildren will be taking that one because... That's the one based off of what I call good science and medicine, uh, you know, uh, with our information, synthetic peptides, multi-tope, based off the spike protein versus off of this messenger RNA and stuff. That's the one I'm going to take, and that's what I'm going to be patient and waiting to take, because even though you get the Pfizer vaccine, folks, today, you can still die next week mm. from ours. And the bottom line is that they've had people that have had both shots and still died, and they've had folks that have both shots it still got reinfected. So it tells you the vaccine, you know, has a long ways to go to prove itself. So you're giving a thumbs up to COVAX, even though, because I know you said that usually it takes like years to, to, to get a vaccine. So what makes COVAX different from Pfizer? Because of the, because of the, the, the because of the, the uh, what I call the, the, the virology and understanding the biochemistry. One of the things about the COVAX vaccine is very important. That a lot of people don't understand is that when you create a vaccine, a vaccine is supposed to be able to do antibodies and also be able to neutralize viruses. Well, the second thing a vaccine is supposed to do is supposed to induce what we call long-term and short-term antibodies and, and what we call memory cells based off of B cells and T cells. And right now, there's not one of these vaccines has what we call affinity maturation or conferred immunity, which means you have long-term immunity. With the COVAX vaccine, you have long-term antibodies, immunity. So if I inject you, your grandmother today, grandmother should have antibodies from a year from now to be able to fight that infection. And that's one of none of the vaccines that I've seen that are out there being uh, used has that ability. It's, there's nobody on the planet that can say that these vaccines have vaccine effectiveness where they're preventing grandmother from getting an infection from a year. That's just not the way it is. Okay. Um, I think this might be the last question. Uh, he asks, could you ask him if he sees COVID being a seasonal thing? No, it's not seasonal. Uh, uh, COVID is endemic. When we have words like uh, pandemic versus endemic, the SARS virus now is what we call endemic. And that means that this virus is in our society to stay. The flu is seasonal, will always be seasonal in the September, October, November. The SARS COVID virus, folks, is here every day of your life spring fall, fall winter for the next 50 years okay um I, I i think that's it for now and if it's not like you said we could do a part two um I'm, I'm i'm glad to have this on the on the channel if you have any last words for the people watching uh let it be known no not at all i just uh folks just make sure you protect yourself uh you know don't become complacent you know uh just because you can't see the virus does not mean it's there uh, just because, uh, you know, uh, you, you hear people talk, uh, you make sure you listen to people that are experts, like people are sending me messages like three days ago, uh, Dr. Rowland, the virus numbers are going down, and now all the day that the CDC said the virus numbers are going up. <laughs> and that's because of the, the, the virus, the mutants and stuff. So don't let your guard down. You know, be smart. You know, have a positive attitude. Make sure you're thinking outside the box. Make sure you have situational awareness. Make sure you're doing the best practical uh policies for yourself from washing your hands not with adult soap or antibacterial soap you want to have something that is antiviral because this is a virus and stuff making sure you have the best mask in the business because it's a respiratory disease make sure you're not touching the touch screens out in the general public because they're all contaminated with feces that's just a fact get to my fingers the finger pass that'll save your life it'll save your heartache because you when you're out in the public you're touching all these screens at the ATM machine to get your bank money or you're at the gas station. So protect yourself. Be smart. And then uh, make sure you follow me on Dr. Rowland on uh, Instagram or uh, Facebook me at uh, Dr. Ro Dr. Lane Rowland on Facebook. And, you know, and I'll keep bringing the best information. You can always follow me on the Black News Channel every Sunday. 
Wait, for everybody watching right now, uh, I appreciate you. Go get the right mask, then go get the Darth Vader mask after that. Go get the finger pass. Go get uh, everything, the the right soap. I'm going to get the right soap. I, I, you blew them out with the soap thing. I'm thinking that I'm good with this Dove soap, this Zest soap that we're using. Not good at all. I'm going to replace it with, what? How, what is it? It's not antibacterial, but it's anti what? And the word we're looking for, folks, is called antiseptic. Septic. Antiseptic. Antiseptic microbial, which means it kills not just, uh, it kills viruses, bacteria, and fungus. You want an antiseptical, uh, antiseptic uh, uh, microbial uh, soap, and you can get that at my fingers. And it's the best in the world. What we use, it will save your life. That's just a fact. It's, and, and it's the way it is. Well, for people watching, I appreciate you. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters going to hate. Players going to play. And y'all holler at your boy.